as expected. Without their warlord leading them, the Hillmen of Dunland are nothing more than a bunch of squabbling brigands. Those who try to destroy our dynasty lie trampled in the dust. We have sent a strong message to all of Middle-earth. If you stand in the way of the Rahirim, you will be crushed. Our realm has expanded tremendously. We have brought peace and prosperity to these wild lands, but that does not mean we can rest easy. Our relationship with the fishermen of Enedwaith is stable at best, though we cannot really call them our friends nor allies. And there is of course a lingering shadow in the east, both from the lands of Mirkwood and Mordor. Rohan shall serve as a beacon of hope in these dark times. Evil shall not prevail for as long as the Rohirrim ride. Spears may be shaken, shields be splintered, but our pride shall never fall. Hello my friends and welcome back for episode 7, I think, of our Rohan campaign in 30 Days to the War, Divide and Conquer. And I have once again brought back the special guest. Hi! <laughs> she has returned, the Princess of Rohan. You're no uh. longer... Sauron's mistress. <laughs> you are now a princess of the free peoples. Well, I like it Rohan. more. You like it more, or, yeah. do you, or would you prefer to be Sauron's mistress? No. Okay, no. I want right. to be a princess. You want to be a princess. I mean, you can be an evil princess. Now, before we start, um, something I didn't do in the last episode was the name recommendations. I got a couple. I haven't listed them all, but uh, I have listed the ones that really stood out to me. And the first one was a suggestion from Aramil, and he suggested to rename Isengard. He said it's a bit cheeky. But would it be too cheeky? I don't think it would be to rename Isengard to Izzygard. I don't know why, I just really like it. Look how good that looks on the map as well. Izzygard! Nice. We earned that one. <laughs> so we actually crushed Isengard already. So Saruman, yeah. the white wizard, he's done. Grima, remember Grima, Wormtongue? Yeah, I know. He's done. Theoden's no longer sick. Oh, nice. He's alive and kicking. There he is, look at him. Look at him, looking Much fresh. Much better. <laughs> it's not the old <laughs> sickly man. Another name recommendation from um, Alfie was to rename some settlements to Theoden and um, not Theoden, Theodred and Eomer. Do you know Theodred? Does that name sound it's, familiar? It's a cousin. No, no that's Eomer. So Theoden had or has a son, but in the the movies and the book, he's killed very much at the beginning of the oh, War of the Ring. He yeah. dies very early on. Um, but in our game, so it's not like in the movies. No, because okay. in, in the game you start with Theodred, and oftentimes he'll die. But mm -hmm. in our game, Theodred is actually a living legend. He's the main commander of our troops. He has done so much work. Okay. I don't even. I can't even count how many guys that guy killed on his own. <laughs> like thousands, tens of thousands. That's a reference. Um, so someone suggested that we should rename some settlements to Theodred, and then Eomer. Maybe he'll look familiar. Remember him. Yeah. The brother of Eowyn. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a good idea. So I think we'll rename... We already renamed this settlement to Hammerstroke. I think Durwath could be... Or, yeah, Durwath. We'll rename Durwath to Eomer. Is the volume too high? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not going to do that like that. I'll have to do it like that. That's a little, bit, a little bit annoying because then I have to change it in the video as yeah, well. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So my girlfriend is using the headphones. I don't hear anything, but that's okay. I know all the music. <laughs> Eomer's Hold. Does that sound good? It's a castle. It's not a town. So oh, A yeah. hold is like, like a castle. Eomer's Hold. And then I think perhaps Tharbad or maybe Dunderag. No, we'll, we'll take Tharbad because that's a really proper big city. So it's mm -hmm. a, a great honor for Theodred. Um, how, how would you call it? With reference to Theodred, do you have like, any names or, or suggestions? I have no idea. You have no idea? No. Uh, how about Theodred's Glory? Does that sound good? That's fine. That sounds pretty fancy, right? And then there was one more name suggestion, but we can't apply that one. It's from Halbrand. Did I mention that that name suggestion was from Alfie? I think I did, yeah. Uh, Halbrand suggested to rename Dunyard, or in our case Dunlarak, because we already named Dunyard Hammerstroke, mm -hmm. to Hillman's Rest, which I quite like, because... With Saruman's army, there were also evil men that were part of it. They joined up with Saruman. They pledged allegiance to Saruman. You remember in the movie, yeah. like, one guy, like, sliced open his hand and it was like, I mm. swear fealty to Saruman. Yeah, I remember. I don't know why he talks like Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so first we killed Isengard, and then we killed Dunland, who are the, those people mm -hmm. that sided with the Hillmen, people that used to live in Rohan 500 years ago. We kind of pushed them out, so they always kind of hated us, and that's why they mm -hmm. sided with Saruman. Uh, but we will have none of that bullshit. If they side with the enemy, they shall die, and we have already killed them off <laughs> by killing their leadership. So essentially what we are doing right now is just capturing their settlements. So the faction yeah. died, the settlements became rebels. We're cleaning up whatever rebel trash remains, which is just really poopy units. 
and that will take Dunderag, and that's most of the land taken here. We still have Enedwaith, which is another Free Peoples faction. They're just random fishermen, really. We're oh. kind of neutral to them. I don't really trust them. We're not allies or friends at all, but we're not enemies either. We just yeah. kind of coexist, but I always feel like they're going to attack me at some point. And I think I should attack them at some point as well, because I mix up the colors. They have, like, this mustard yellow. Mm -hmm. We have this more greenish yellow. Yeah, that's... That's confusing, so I'm like, let's exterminate them. We only have one color. <laughs> the true yellow. If you can even call that yellow. I guess it's, it's yellow. What would you call that? We have many discussions about colors. Mustard yellow. Mustard yellow. But I call this mustard... Ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Getting too distracted. <laughs> and over here is Dol Guldur. You remember from The Hobbit, uh, where the necromancer is? Sauron, basically. He's in Dol Guldur. I'm on Lang. Uh... You oh. have no idea what I'm talking no. about. That's okay. Sorry. It's basically evil. But we okay. also know <laughs> that the One Ring is here. So that might be an interesting goal. So at the moment, it's kind of like, what do we do? Do we go for Enedwaith? Do we go for the Guldur? Do we maybe already sally out some troops to take down Mordor, who is fighting Gondor? What happens Bondo? if you get the ring? If I get the ring, I have two options, basically. Or we could do some fun role-playing as the <laughs> third option. But the two main options that the game presents are um, that you either hide the ring, and you just mm -hmm. leave it in Rivendell, and I think you get like... I, don't, I think you get nothing, actually. Or you take the ring, and you bring it to Mount Doom, yeah. Cast it into the fire and kill Sauron hmm. for good That's and then get rid of the Mordor faction. But there was actually a suggestion, I forgot who commented it, I'll be sure to like edit it in the video, um, that maybe we can do some role playing with the ring because our characters are not as strong willed as say an Aragorn is, for mm -hmm. example, or one of the elves is to destroy the One Ring. So it'd be interesting if we could role play that. If we capture the One Ring, it might actually fall to its corruption and oh. it could maybe make us a little bit more. Yeah. Because, for example, a character like Eomer has a great lust for glory and victory. He's an honorable man, yes, but, still, but he would yeah. use the ring for his own personal benefit and the benefit of his people. So I think that could be some interesting role-playing. But I think what we'll do now is actually send out Elfhelm. Isn't that a cool name? Elfhelm. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> <coughs> With his armies. Uh, we'll leave one unit behind for now to go clean up this rebel stack. Some rebel orcs that cross the Anduin. Mm. So we're going to go kill them. I'll just quickly train like some peasants to uh, guard to you. Actually, we can send out this guy as well because we get a, another hidden stack the next turn. So for now, we're just kind of building up our settlements. We have a lot of money because we took all that land. Isengard especially is a very rich settlement. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess once we're done cleaning up with the rebels, we'll give these guys some new troops. We'll retrain the men. And then we'll look towards Dol Guldur to take uh, them down. And if Gondor would need our help and they would light the beacons... Oh, we can actually build a wall in Isengard. Very nice. Then we'll send out Durahirim to go help them. But for now, let's see, what can we get into Hornburg? Um, let's get some farms there. We have a good economy, <clears throat> but if we invest money, we can get more money out of it again. Is this your micromanagement? No, 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 no. No, just something else. Yes. <laughs> micromanagement is on the battlefield when you're commanding different kinds of troops and you're commanding okay. troops one by one. That's called micromanagement. This is more macromanagement in a way <laughs> because it's on the larger scale. Micromanaging, when I'm talking about micromanaging and I'm talking about, oh my god, babe, people said my micromanagement really sucks. <laughs> That's mainly, they talk about it with cavalry. Because cavalry okay. is only as good as the person using it. Yeah. If you have infantry, you can just tell them to go attack someone and they'll just do their thing. But cavalry is strong when you can really give it commands all the time. Yeah. You can be like, now run that, do that, do that. You want to always be commanding them. But if you have a lot of cavalry, it's difficult to do 20 commands at the same time. Okay. And that's where the term micromanagement comes from. If, if you're good at micromanaging, that means you're very good at the small details of uh, moving your cavalry around. All right, I do believe we're at the end of our turn. So I guess we'll be back at turn number 39. And there we go. We're going to get Guth Wine a wife. That doesn't really matter. Just means he <laughs> can get kids. Oh. <laughs> and if your kids grow a certain age, which takes a pretty long time in this mod, um, they also become generals. Okay. So that's a way to get generals. You can also get them through adoptions. All right, the council wants me to talk to the Easterlings of Rune, which is actually my favorite faction in the game. Mm -hmm. Not sure if I've already told that, um, but it is. People you of Discord me. will know that. <laughs> yeah, I just I think their design is just timeless. Uh, something I forgot to do in the previous turn was to talk to the Dwarves of Ereduid. So there's a script in play that if you ally with the Dwarves of Erebor, mm -hmm. over here, those are the dwarves featured in the Hobbit movie. Um, and the dwarves of Edithuid, if you ally to both, or ally to one of them, but if you ally to both, it goes faster. You can get a dwarven colony of sorts in your oh. settlement, in the Hornburg. Yeah. 
Um, do you remember in Helm's Deep that they put the women and children in like a cave called the Glittering Caves? You mm-hmm. can get a dwarven colony there. Oh, okay. Um, and you can train like a specific dwarven unit, also gives you some bonuses. But the Dwarves of Edeluine, we had an alliance, but they broke it because they went neutral. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're just going to try to get it back, which it cost me 8,000 to get it last time. I hope they will accept it at 6,000, seeing as our relations are really good. They should? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> so now we have both alliances ongoing. Uh, yes, Dwarves of Erebor and Dwarves of Erdluin. So we should be able to get the Glittering Caves pretty quickly. Nice. Another alliance, there we go. And some more constructors. That was most of our money spent, though. Alright, so Dunlarak, let's see. I think if we attack Captain Holdad... Uh, though AMS force is rather small. So I think perhaps I should send over most of Theodred's cavalry, but that would leave Theodred's glory relatively undefended. I think I'll leave the peasants behind. Uh, uh, hmm, it's kind of tricky. The question is, can Eomer on his own take down this army plus this army? I think he can. Wait, who are you going to fight? <laughs> Rebels. Okay, yeah. These guys, Captain Haldad and whoever's in there will sally out. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, the battle power is already in the middle, so that usually means it's pretty easy to win. Oh yeah, Clan Spearmen are a rubbish unit. Clan Axemen, rubbish. Clan Hunters, go ahead, say it. Rubbish. Rubbish. Farmhand <laughs> Pikemen. Rubbish. <laughs> Dullity Horsemen. Rubbish. Not really. <laughs> they're, no, okay. actually, they're actually a decent <laughs> unit. They're the one decent unit in there. Uh, and then Captain Maroc, uh, more rubbish. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I think we can win this one fairly easy. We do have some infantry, which is something that I don't usually bring, but it will help us out. All right, so uh, let's get to the battlefield. And there we go, at the start of deployment, um, I'm actually not used to using infantry because I've usually just only been using cavalry. <laughs> um, but of course having infantry does make it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm actually so used to playing the hot seat where Eomer has Riders of the Fold. <laughs> I was like convinced he had a different unit, but he has Rohan Bodyguard here. Riders of the Fold are a horse archer unit, just like these guys. Mm -hmm. So they are archers on top of a horse. And they're quite effective at taking down these guys um, because they're way slower than we are. So we can just shoot at them and then run away. Yeah, I think I know them. You fought against them in the Mordor campaign. Um, also in Helm's Deep, I think. No, no, no. Not you might Helms remember it better than me. There's two yeah, main Helms factions Deep, um, that have horse archers, and that's Rohan and Kant. Kant's more like, I don't think we fought Kant. No, we didn't. It, it wasn't a Mordor campaign. I really remember it. Well, you probably remember better than me, so I'm not. I'm not gonna doubt. Who's the general? It's this guy. He has a star on the map. The clan spearman. If we kill the general early on, the rest of the men are much more likely to start running. We mainly want to use our archers. We want to use one archer unit to kill the farm and pikemen because pikes are a very good counter to cavalry, mm -hmm. and then just fire on whoever else. Meanwhile, Emma is killing some Dunlanding horse trash. No, no, they're not trash. I just I just <laughs> said they're actually not that bad, so I can't call them trash now. That would be disingen dis dish dish in I can't come up with the word. <laughs> that would not be very I don't know what I want to say, man. It's it wouldn't make gay. sense. Disindigen I just don't know anymore. Anyway. I'm having a massive brain fart at the moment. That's okay. <clears throat> as long as it's just only that kind of fart. <laughs> <laughs> um what's going on? The Donald Horsemen, they're not that strong, they're just kind of tricky to kill. For some reason, I, uh, they just always stay alive for so long, probably because it's such a big unit. I would believe that that was the reason. And now they're going to charge my archers, my yelling archers, which is pretty trash. And for some reason, these guys aren't running. That's okay, they'll hold. I'll pull back the yelling archers. The Hummingers can stay in position, cavalry, fire. There's so front. much rat. <laughs> yeah, there's, they have more units than we do for sure, but <clears throat> pretty rubbish. And also the morale is really weak. I'm not sure why they didn't charge there. They didn't put their lances down. Mm -hmm. They just had them up in the air looking fancy. Let's do death and glory. The special ability just boosts the morale and boosts the manpower a little bit. Uh, let's actually use our cavalry to smash in their rear. It's not the best way to use them. I mean, it is, but not the horse archers. But the Dunling Horsemen, I don't know why, but they are so much tougher to kill than any other unit. 
I don't quite see why, but that's okay. Helming is a fine Donling Horseman actually routing. I think we'll get a lot more routes going soon. Um, you guys come over. But yeah, it's a little bit of a messy battle. I see. Then again, we knew that. Oh, but they're all running. Like, they're all so weak. I think they might actually have, like, extra weak morale being rebels. Because mm -hmm. when I was fighting them, when they were done, they didn't ride that quick. I mean, they routed quick, sure, <laughs> but not that quick. All right, careful for the farmland pikemen. If you charge in the rear, that's fine. If you can get them to route, it'd be ideal, but no, we cannot. Pull back. They're being chased down. AMS having a blast. Uh, let's run into them. <clears throat> that should route them. My voice is a little sore. I think I'm. Uh, I think I have a cold actually. That would also explain why my voice was a little bit different in yesterday's video as well. Talking about yesterday's video, that's the one where I did all the completing. I know, <laughs> I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't complete that much, but I do want to say thanks to everyone that posted nice comments. Which was everyone, actually. I didn't get one rude comment on the last video. <laughs> What's that? What the hell is that kind of reaction? <laughs> no, no, oh, never mind. What are you trying to say here? I don't know. You're like me, man. You can't think straight. Mm -hmm. It's because of the heat. It's pretty warm in Belgium still, and it's gonna get hotter. It's not that hot today. You're literally like waving your hand against your face because yeah, it's that warm. Yeah, but it's hot in your room, but outside it's very good. Yeah, but that's that's exactly what it's I'm like saying. Like 24 degrees, it's good. 24? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it like 30? No. <laughs> oh, well, it's tomorrow 30 in my room at tomorrow least. Tomorrow is 30. Tomorrow's 30. Oh, yeah. joy! And I'm already like. Ugh. Saturday, it's 37 degrees. Oh god. <laughs> Anyway, Oops, I'm that, sorry. that's today's weather report. <laughs> Brought to you live by a princess of Rohan, no less. All right, let's start the clan hunters. They'll rout. No problemo. We actually didn't lose that many men. It looked like we were doing much worse. They just couldn't kill anything. My god, these downlanding scum are just useless. They're just bloody useless. Clan spearmen. <clears throat> I'm so used to playing with Theodred, who has a much bigger bodyguard unit mm -hmm. than Eoma. Yeah, my only has the 20 something, whilst Theodred right now is up to like 40, which is twice as many horses. And as you all know, the more horses, the better. But uh, yeah, the Rohan campaign is going very well. I never thought it would go this well, because I know Rohan's a powerful faction, but I'm not that good of a cavalry player. Although, again, the Khan's campaign went pretty well as well, but I wasn't exactly known for my, my microing. <laughs> but overall, it's going pretty smooth. We're just gonna fire on these guys until they're almost there, and then we're gonna run away. <laughs> Catch <laughs> me if you can. It's pretty sneaky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're also pretty lucky with Saruman killing himself, the warlord of Donland killing himself. Pretty suicidal bunch, to be honest. They all killed themselves and doomed their factions because of it. So that did make life particularly easy. Uh, I'm actually not using this car. I'm so distracted. Like the live I'm stream sorry. all over again. Yes, <laughs> it's because of you. Nah, 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 it's all good. We'll win this one. Just gotta make sure the AOMA doesn't die in some silly way. I am notorious for getting my custom generals killed, but so far so good. I've only gotten one general killed as far as I know, and it wasn't a custom one, so... I mean, AOMA isn't a custom bodyguard either, but he's a, a lore character. Mm -hmm. The other guy was just a random guy, so... We do have three custom generals, but... Um, in a way, they're actually worse than the standard bodyguard because they're all infantry. What's a custom general? I don't uh, know. <laughs> every faction has like a basic general's bodyguard unit, so your generals have a yeah. specific unit tied to them. But some generals in the game have, for lore reasons or just being different reasons, a custom unit. So they have a different unit than what you'd normally expect that okay. bodyguard unit to have. So, for example, as Rohan, all our bodyguards are cavalry. Yeah. They're called the general's bodyguards, just the name of the unit. Um, but there's three generals that do not have cavalry, but they have an infantry unit. Mm -hmm. That's Hama, uh, Erkenbrand, and uh, I forgot the name of the last guy. That's okay. Doesn't matter. Some other guy. That's probably like, <laughs> people are going to be like, oh, how could you forget about Bob? <laughs> He's the most important character. <laughs> well, Erkenbrand, Hama, and... It's okay. No, I, I, ah, I'm killing myself. I'll, I'll look on the map in just a second. Anyway, we killed 100. Uh, we lost 100. We killed 1,158, so that's a pretty nice. good result. Um, but yeah, so what I was trying to say is some units have a custom bodyguard, so they stand out from the rest. And usually a custom bodyguard is an upgrade. It means, okay. oh, it's a better. 
But there are some instances where having a custom bodyguard is actually kind of a curse in disguise. Yeah. Such as the case for Rohan. They, they, I mean, they're situation. Let's see who killed the most. It was actually Aomer, as expected, but then mm -hmm. this one unit of Rohiri Marches, they're the ones who charged the most. Uh, they lost quite a few units, but they killed 306, so still pretty good results. Nice. Pretty good kill death ratios. All right, I'll see you back on the strat map. There we go. That is done. The rack taken. Boom. Boop. And that means we have all the lands. Oh my god, that's actually a pretty rich settlement. All the lands of Dunland, and that was going to be called Hillman's Rest, because that is where we put the Hillman to rest. Um, we only have one percent culture here, so let's build the standing stones. And let's take a look at the custom bodyguards. So we have over here Urkenbrand. So a general, general, <laughs> a general general, <laughs> like this guy, has the Rohan bodyguards. That's okay. a standard bodyguard for Rohan. But then you have three units or three generals that have custom guys. So like yeah. Urkenbrand has Helmingus. That's his unit um, that he's associated with. Then we have over here Gambling. That was the last guy. Oh. Gambling <laughs> with his Riddermark Axeman. Mm -hmm. We used Gambling a little bit in the campaign, so he has proven his worth. And then there is Hama over here, who actually has the best unit. Um, Metasol Doorwards. They're basically my top tier spear unit. Basically my, my strongest infantry unit. Yeah. They're not quite as good as any cavalry, but out of all the infantry, it's a pretty good, pretty good uh, unit. Okay. So I should I should use him at some point. It's kind of a shame to leave him rotting in Onodrith. So we'll find a purpose for him. Uh, okay, so that's done. The rack taken. Oh, again, Enadwyth just marching in my lands. I need to send over some reinforcements to the north. Uh, but these guys need to be retrained, and I spend all my cash on it. And Luin. Do I have any spare? Ca I think I have some. In no. Do I have any spare horses? My kingdom for a horse. I do have some infantry that. Uh, I, I kind of like leaving them in Bregnus. We'll send these guys home for retraining at the Helmingus, so Hornburg. Captain Aldo, you can go to Hammerstroke. Uh, Guthwein, yeah, you stay there. That's a guy who just got married. Um, <laughs> we do have some horses here. I'll leave them in Town of the Just right now. I feel like anyway going to attack me any moment now. Alright, this is still Rebel Land. That's Metrath, I do believe. Uh, we're bordering Rebels, Rebels, and then Goblins of Moria. A faction I'd rather not border because they're no. also going to declare war on me at some point Goblins. but if i can just yeah Goblins, uh, if i can just spend my my uh my hard-earned cash on um rohidim on riders for a little bit i should be good okay elf helm let's pop down some watchtowers so we're no longer blind to the enemy and let's go take down these rebels these rebels killed one of my generals because i was an idiot I really was, I really was. I, I threw that guy's life away. But now Aww. we'll have our vengeance. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So we have two units of Rohidim archers, a unit of Eret skirmishes, which is a javelin throwing unit, and a unit of Rohidim. Okay. And this guy has, these are all trash, like proper, proper trash, even more trash than what we just fought. Oh. But the general himself, <laughs> another custom general, has black Uruks, who are quite decent. They're not good, they're decent. They'll do okay. All right, so time for our revenge. We are fighting at Abonhen, which is the place where Boromir actually dies. It's the place where the Urukai fight the Fellowship oh, at the end yeah. of the Fellowship. Yeah. Where Boromir gets uh, shot but, yeah. by Lurtz, by Dick Cheney. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll <laughs> see you all on the battlefield. <laughs> The enemy is over there. Oh, I remember the place. <laughs> I wanted to get like a cinematic shot and you were like, where's the enemy? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Sorry. It's actually quite a nice shot from the, the watchtower here. Look at that. If I now do press scroll lock and we have like a cinematic shot. There's the enemy. Yeah, I see And that's him us. Now. And unlike the last time we fought here, well, I fought here, we are going from uphill to downhill. The last that's... time we fought, the enemy was there and I was here. But it's better with your horse, right? Yes, absolutely. Remember the charge at Helm's Deep? Where uh, Gandalf shows up with Eomer and they all charge down that impossibly steep hill? That's the kind of uh, advantage we're going to get. And also it boosts the uh, range of your archers. You can fire further. Which is rather useful because I think he had... Did he have some archers? Or just javelin men? No, he has some archers. Orc scouts. Alright, Elf Helm. Which is a very proper, cool name. Um, kill the trash. Kill the trash, yeah. Look at them. <laughs> big meanies. Not even that big. 
<laughs> scum of Sauron, in a way. They're rebels, but in their heart they are still loyal. And there are the Black Oduks. And you can tell, they look a lot more professional than the other uh, trashes. Yeah. Well, well armored, well they equipped. They look pretty tough. But uh, we'll uh, kill them nonetheless. Rohirrim! Our javelins are just crushing them. We've already killed 10% without even touching them. Elf Elm charging through, but they're in a very wide formation, which is kind of annoying to charge. Elf Elm, don't get stuck. I don't want you to die. You're actually a pretty decent... Did he die? Death. Oh, I thought that was him. No, he's right here. Here's the red cape. The general has the red cape. Okay. But they're in like a very annoying position. A very annoying formation. They also have some javelins as well, which are quite a good counter to... Um, to horses <clears throat> but we'll just keep charging keep killing keep slaying all right the general is actually following me I'd like to kill that general early on get out of there oh, well. if an announcer just starts blasting in your ear saying oh general has thrown his life away do give me a bit of a heads up I'll try because that message always comes earlier on the voice than it does on the um, the text okay. message. only by a little bit though all right, let's charge this scum from Mordor. Oh, they're turning around. Nice, juicy backs. Oh, they turned around again at the last moment. <laughs> they don't know what to do. That's okay, neither do I. How are we doing? 30% already down. Yes, we'll kill them now. Then we'll retrain these lads. Oh, the enemy general's dead. Go look. Good. You probably heard a message as well saying, Oh, the enemy's general has fallen. No, I didn't hear anything. Oops. <laughs> Why are they... I'll running. check the recording. I'll check the recording. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. running up the hill to chase my uh, yeah, skirmishes, which okay. they're actually successful at. Because they're out of ammo. My javelin ears. That's okay. We'll keep them busy. Now with that general dead, I think that army might just rout pretty early on. They just lose motivation when their general dies. Which makes sense. It's something you often see in history as well. Mm -hmm. It's not about killing the enemy in total. It's about routing them, scaring them. Until they Psychological give warfare. Exactly. And that's how you can win with a much smaller force as well. If you're horribly outnumbered, you can still win battles. Numbers are not everything. <laughs> but they do help. They do help. But it's not always a guarantee. That these Black Oduks just do not want to rout. They're there to avenge their general. And that's okay. The other trash is not so foolhardy. 40 orc hunters, they should rout. No, they're actually shaken. The moment we charge them, they actually gain back some of their courage. Oh, there we go, they're rising. Oh, my Rohirrim's getting slaughtered, probably because of a javelin volley or something, or the orc scouts firing upon them. That's okay, we'll retrain them. They'll get some experience as well. Elf Helm's almost silver tier. So that's pretty good results. So this is my crew. This army is made entirely out of horses, but it's only five units, so it's not, yeah. you know, it's not that mm -hmm. crazy. Any army you usually want to have four to five horses, depending on which faction you play. I think when you're playing Rohan, you want to have 20 horses. But even now, my micro is a little bit poopy. Alright, kill the Black Oduks, because they're the main threat. Uh, I thought I had my Eirid skirmishes up here. Where are my Eirid skirmishes? Oh, there they are. Whoops. <laughs> Always a good sign when you don't know where half your army is. Alright. Black Oduks. Still standing, they do not want to run, but at least they're dying. I can speed things up a little bit now. Oh, yes, the revenge of Amon Hen. Or revenge at Amon Hen, I should say. Uh, we kill, I think our general died here. So we'll, ah. put, we'll put a nice, like, tombstone <laughs> there to remember him. Sadly, I forgot the poor bugger's name, so I'll just have to write something <laughs> like Random Rohan General. I do believe we, like, adopted him and then, like, Three. No, actually, I think he was a son of someone, and then like three turns later, he was already dead. Oh yeah, God, pretty that's sad. sad. <laughs> Ninety percent. We can actually continue a little bit longer because that does give XP. Um, so experience it gives chevrons. You know, chevrons. Look at them running. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's because it's on uh, six times speed. Uh, it's like a, sort of a medal in a way. Um, it's their way of becoming better. Oh, oh, yeah, I know. Experience. Yeah. And as your units get more and more experience, they become better fighters, which translates itself into dealing more damage. Their melee attack goes up. And also higher morale. They're less likely to run. Mm -hmm. They're veterans, basically. All right. That is more than enough killed. Heroic victory kill. Lost 66%, which is about one-fifth. Yep, exactly. 
Uh, let's see who killed the most. The Rohirrim archers actually killed the most. More, w mm -hmm. Way more. The Roman bodyguard only killed 89. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Normally they always top the charts, but not in this case. The Rohirrim 196, which is pretty good, and the Rohirrim archers 194. So let's get these guys retrained, and then we'll march either on Dol Guldur or Mordor. And there we go. Another orc scum. Yeah. What are you saying? What the fuck? Yeah. We killed him. <laughs> oh, Elfhelm became man of the hour, but he's already a general. I, there's something buggy with these scripts. Usually when you're playing as a captain and your captain does really well, you can adopt him and mm -hmm. he becomes a general. Yeah. But this guy's already a general. Oh. I adopted like the same Nazgul five times because I always get that man of the hour message. Which, oh. uh... Okay, then. Oh, but I guess it's different because this guy isn't part of the royal family, so we can adopt him into the family. Which is useful, oh. because if your family tree dies down, then, you know, your faction's gone. But my family tree is really healthy. Uh, it doesn't seem like Elfham actually became part- Oh, there he is. He's an adopted son of Theodred. There we go. Mm. Just like Guthwai, just like Osfrid. So that begs the question, do they have a better claim to the throne than bloody Eomer himself? I guess so. Uh, doesn't matter, though. Theoden will still be alive for a little bit. And Theodred will take over because we're not going to get Theodred killed. <laughs> okay, I do believe we're at the end of our turn. Conqueror of Dunderag. Look at that. Elfhelm, Horsemaster. Pretty good. Sword Bearer. Let's send him back to Elberg to retrain the Ben. And then, yeah, we'll probably send him. Or maybe we should let, let Theoden lead the men. Just for kind of lore reasons, the king. To, mm -hmm. uh, to Gondor. Let's see. Let's first send them back and retrain them, and then we can do some, some thinking and some stinking. Alright, I'll see you all back on turn number 40. A Paul Turner's Guild in Theodred's Glory. I think what I'll do, something that people have taught me, is if I close this message, and then just spend enough money... It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of complicated to explain, but... Uh, <laughs> guilds are special buildings which you get a prompt to at the start of a turn, depending mm -hmm. on certain conditions are met. Yeah. And if you get a guild, they're like, Hey, you want to sponsor us? It only costs 1.7 thousand bloody gold. And you're like, oh, I don't want to spend that right now. But if you decline, they'll be less likely to come back. Mm -hmm. But if you say, hang on a minute, give me some time to think about it, and then spend all your money, and then you're like... Oops, can't afford it. <laughs> then you don't lose any points and they're more likely to offer it again in the future. Okay. So we're going to do that, which is a trick that a lot of people have talked to me about because I was always like, oh, so annoying. Um, why are people unhappy in Isengard? Is he God? Why, <laughs> why are you such a bad governor? I always find it funny that like, the more culture you get, at first they'll become more and more angry. I guess it's because of assimilation. In the beginning they're like, eh, whatever. Do we have like the highest tier building of culture now? The two. Can't we go higher? I thought we could go higher, or is that only in the city? Uh, let's see, cultural buildings. No, the tomb is the highest. It's in cities that we can get a hero shrine. Mm. Oh, okay. That's a little bit annoying, because they're going to be unhappy. But we can probably get a herbalist. That wouldn't be too bad, I'd say. Public health bonus as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, we still have quite a bit of cash to spend. Let's first retrain. Oh, no, let's send you back home. I want cavalry. Oh, hello, Luke. General, let's send you to here because we need lots of good governors in these lands. Let us make sure that you're moving. Okay, you are. Then at the Holmberg, let us train some cavalry, some archers, some Eret skirmishes, some Rohidim. At Isigard, let's see if we can retrain the lances. Not yet. Oh, the skirmish, I thought they were lances. Because we can get Eret lances. So why did I send them here? Probably because they look so similar. Probably just mix them up. Uh, okay, but that's 70%. So that means they're angry, but mm -hmm. they're not going to revolt. There's no chance of okay. revolution. How do you make them happy? Um, by building certain buildings <clears throat> or improving the garrison. It's basically like it is in real life. Either you just suppress them with military or you give them reasons to be happy. <laughs> Bread and games, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, Hellman's Rest. Um, once we get the culture up, we can build stables there. Enidwaith has fucked off out of Town of the Just, so perhaps we don't have to go to, to war. Let us get... A leather tanner here. Let's wait for the culture to go up. Let's put the tax rate on low. We have a very small population there. I oh, know actually, Enidwaith moving up to Theodred's glory. They might try to claim that. That's gonna backfire horribly for them. Uh, why do you have to be like this? Seriously, why do you have to be so annoying? I don't really want to fight you, Enidwaith. Seriously, I don't. I think you're pretty chill. Mm -hmm. I like playing as Enidwaith, which is the, the faction I played yeah. on the stream, as you remember. Um, 
like, why do we need to be friends? Uh, why <laughs> do we need to be enemies? Yes, <laughs> not friends. Oops. Enemies. Frenemies, yes. I have a bit of a Freudian slip there. Oh, I trained that guy. I completely forgot about him. So Gal Gal Mod is someone I trained specifically. Whoopsie daisy. Let's get some more Rohirrim. We are inching close to the barracks. Even. This is also turn 40. And okay. if you remember, or don't remember, um, from my house rules, when I have a Palantir, which I do have in Isengard or Isigard now, let's get used to saying uh -huh. Isigard, we have the Orthanc Stone, I'm allowed, when I have one Palantir, to do Toggle Fog of War every 10 turns. So that's 30, 40, 50. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Toggle Fog of War means I turn off this black shadow here. Because right now, if I look at different parts of the map, I don't see anything. Uh -huh. Look at this. If I do Toggle Fog of War, which I'm allowed to do at this point, at turn 40, boom, we see everything that's happening. Oh, that's... Heavy. Very useful, yes. <laughs> so we can just kind of see how Dol Guldur is doing. Because my thought process between do I go to war with Dol Guldur, Mordor, or Renadwaith is which faction is most likely to get very big and very scary yeah. in a short time span. And if I take a look, Gondor is successfully holding off Mordor. They're even doing a bit of a counteroffensive. Look, there's Boromir. He's actually <laughs> pushing Balaknar back a little bit. But... I'm like, what does this troop trade over here? That almost looks like me playing Mordor. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but Kerandros might fall, but there's a big stack ready. So Gondor and Mordor are just kind of keeping each other in balance. Yeah. But I would actually think that Gondor might win. Because look, there's like a huge army here. Yeah? Faram is also still alive. Bottom is actually a surprise that they're both still alive. He has like really big stacks. Mordor has big stacks as well, but a Gondor mm -hmm. big stack is scarier yeah. than a Mordor big stack. And because we killed Isengard, Gondor is not going to get attacked from Kirithyar. They actually have Gind, which is... Rather annoying because I kind of want to have Gint. Um, so I don't expect Mordor to become a real threat to us anytime soon. I'm going to help out Gondor because it's going to yeah. look awesome. But it's not a priority. If we look at Dol Guldur, they're expanding a fair bit. Let's see who they're at war with actually. Because they were actually peaceful for quite a long time for the most part. Uh, they're at war with anyone, everyone right now. So Dwarves of Doom, Kingdom of Dale, Anduin Vale, Wooden Realm, and the Realm of Lothorian. But interestingly enough, not Dorwinian, not the purple lads here. Mm -hmm. So they're still friends, but they'll go to war soon. So I'd say Dol Guldur is actually being kept in check relatively well. They're expanding a little bit against the Anduin Vale. There's Kamul himself. Um, they hold a decent chunk of land, but they're at war with so many factions, they'll probably start losing soon. And then we come to my concerns with Enedwaith. If I'm not mistaken, Enedwaith is still neutral to everyone. They have no allies, no enemies. Mm -hmm. These are just rebels. Everyone's yeah. enemies with rebels, same as me. Um, and they have all this land that they can expand towards without upsetting anyone. Metraith, hmm. Korwilishar, even Buzradum still ripe for the taking, which is a very good settlement, which has a big mean garrison. So they can actually become quite big and give me a lot of grief. So that's why I think maybe we should go for Enedwaith first take them down or at least push them back across the uh, the river crossing here at the Gwythlo I believe but I'm, someone might correct me on that I think it's Gwythlo <laughs> um, and then maybe try to get peace with them for then but like this land I kind of want to all control myself mm -hmm. uh, but yeah then we'll be in a long rough fight with that Yeah. I currently do not have really have the manpower for it but I could get it on pretty short notice, especially if I send Elfhelm over. Or Elfhelm's army at the very least. Uh, these guys. Uh, with this army alone, I can take down like three settlements, I believe. And then Theodred. And I also believe Enderwai is going to attack me soon. So that's that's why I kind of want to go for Enderwai first. Despite the ring being so close to us, I'd say we can get the ring at some other time. We'll, we have pretty um, fast armies, being mostly horses and all that shit. So if the ring spawns anywhere else, we can get that relatively quickly. Uh, we're not going to attack Enedwaith, though. No. We're just going to wait and see and just build up our armies in the meantime. Yeah. So, I think I'm recruiting in most places that I can recruit. Don't want to recruit peasants, rather recruit proper horses straight away. Can I get... Ooh, farm and pikemen. Actually, kind of nice unit. I know they're just different kinds of peasants, but they're good peasants. <laughs> but I think uh, we'll just move on to turn number 41. Let's actually just keep talking. Sometimes I do enter... And, oh, yeah, right. The message for the guild. I spend all my money. Oh. So now I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. Oops, I'm broke. <laughs> Isn't that a shame? Yeah, removing that diplomat. It's always nice to also see, like, to remember what are my diplomats doing at the <laughs> moment. 
We're moving him to Rune because we had a mission for 750 gold coins. And that might not seem like a whole lot, but man, can it go a long way if you spend it well. <laughs> Let me assure you, 750 gold coins in a pickle. What does he do? He's like... That's a land crossing right there. You can't yeah. really see it, but they can cross at that oh, river. Okay. So the Suduri Londair land bridge is a very useful position to hold. Because if you hold that, then they can't cross. Or they have to go all the way to Tharbad or Theodrid's yeah. Glory now. If they can't cross there, and they can't because we hold it, they'll have to go all the way to Austinathil, which is a fair bit further. A horse breeder's guild in the Hillman's Rest. Eh, maybe. You choose. Yes or no? <laughs> Just mm. say yes or no. Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> Cost a little bit of money, but we have cash to spare. Right, these guys are going to be city spaghetti for a little bit, so be it. Lots of stuff. Eisen Run got upgraded. It now has walls. Look at that. That should become nice. the town. The ice cream truck's passing in the background. The microphone's picking that up for sure. <laughs> as it always does. It smells when I'm recording. It's like, oh, I think Izzy's recording. <laughs> Time to blare out the sirens. Let's go. Four Theolingas. Uh, no, I want ice cream. You want ice cream? I yeah. want ice cream. <laughs> I always want ice cream. Actually, hang on a second. I could just make this very easy on me if I merge proper. Um, nope. There we go. Now I can retrain it with just the three. And then we'll have a stack of one, two, three, four, five, six cavalry. And we'll send them towards Enadwaith as well, because no doubt will they attack me. <laughs> I don't think Dol Guldur will attack me, but they might prove me wrong. Oh, what the hell is this? Hmm? Who's that? That's the Goblins of Moria coming in with a really big army. Oh. What the hell? Oh, that scares me. I don't want to lose Aomer like that. <laughs> that proper scares me. Alright, let's send over some reinforcements. Oh, Moria. You son of a bitch. They'll be pretty easy to kill, although I think this guy has Azox Defilers. Oh no, he has He looks Riders. scary though. He is scary. He's the faction heir. The second in command. Can't even get these men over in time. I can get Theodred over in time, but I don't want to switch positions with them. I'd much rather have Aomer die than Theodred, to be honest. But... <sighs> Goblins of Moria. They're gonna attack me, no doubt. They, you don't walk an army that big in someone's land uh -uh. to pick flowers. <laughs> This guy's coming with a mission. Yeah. He wants to kill some horses. I actually need to check Four if horses. I... Four horses. You eat horse. I don't eat horse. You are the one who eats horse. Yeah. But, but that's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we get? Ah, this is annoying. Then again, I do think... Hello. Normally I'd say goblins, no problemo, but he has a lot of wogs. And wogs are oh. pretty good counter to cavalry. He has a lot of Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Can I train anything here? No. Oh, if I could get the farm and pike, then that would actually be useful. My culture is way too low. That's annoying. Perhaps I should just... Ah, oh, I mean... I'm just thinking maybe I should just move this army out and just let them take Hillman's Rest and then reclaim it later. Come back with a bigger army. Maybe that's a good idea. Or maybe I'll just move out Eomer. And just try to hold but these guys are all very experienced yeah. you know what i'll pull out the cavalry leave the infantry oh crap i'm an idiot because i pulled these infantry these cavalry in let's pull them out oh Hillman's rest is unhappy well who would have thought yeah i know they're <laughs> angry <laughs> um let's fill the tomb for now let's see maybe they won't attack us we'll see we'll see we'll see ah uh, but th if we lose this because it's like a maxed experienced yes. unit we pulled out two. It was stupid for me to send them in from Town of the Just. If Town of the Just is happy with just the peasants... All these guys need retraining badly. That's the problem. <clears throat> they all need retraining. And I can't give it to them right now. I just need way more units. I need stables in a lot more locations. Let's get stables here. Uh, let's get stables in EOMAS Hold. We need more horses. If we just get stables, we already get access to three kinds of horses. So that would be very good. And then we retreat, retrain them. I could already send some over, the ones I'm not retraining. They can already get a move on. Uh, but yeah, it does seem our next target will not be Enedwaith, but the bloody Goblins of Moria. Alright, let's end the turn, but let's just keep talking, eh? Why not? <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot to move my diplomat to Rune. I'm such a moron. I uh, always forget about my diplomats. Hmm. You need to you, remind you me. 
write I need it down. to write it down. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. I guess have like a note in front of me. Yeah. Or like tape it on my screen, my monitor. <laughs> like an old person working an office job. They stand. always do that. They have like little tabs there. <laughs> you know exactly what kind of person yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. I mean, I used to do it, but mm-hmm. then I learned the power of Notepad. <laughs> you're just sure. you're just making fun of me at this point, just laughing in my face. Okay, the Gamos Mora did not attack me just yet. Uh, let's spend enough money to not have to do with that. All right, so what are they doing? Where are they? Okay, I do feel secure enough to send in. Yeah, man. Did they pull back? I think so, but I don't know where they went, which is why I need more watchtowers. Where did they go? I think they pulled back to their own land. Oh yeah, there they are. <laughs> I mean, he could still besiege Hillman's Rest in one go. At least I have more forces there. Let's pull back these to hit him. Let's pull him back to Hammerstroke. I actually want to make Hammerstroke a unit production center. Although it is a town, but that's okay. Alright, if this guy can take over command of Hillman's Rest, that would be good. Uh, we should have a lot of forces ready to go now. All these lads, send them over. <laughs> okay, we don't need them that urgently anymore. We have tons of horses coming in now. Good, good, good. We need them. We need the full strength of Durahidim. And if we have a decent sized army, because I had to split up, I, I always had my Durahidim always together with mm -hmm. Theodred, but then I had to split them up to take all these lands, but if I can get them back together in one in one go, we can have a big, mean army ready to go. Uh, we need more culture here for sure. Let's, first things first, use my diplomat, because otherwise I'll definitely forget. <laughs> Move on See, to Rune. Need I need a notepad, yes. Captain Rifat. Hello, Rune. I love you. Oh, you do? Yes, you know I love Rune. <laughs> They're my favorite faction. And let's sell our map information. They have a reasonable amount of wealth. Can we be cheek and ask for, like, a lot of money? Yeah, man, they accepted it. Sounds nice. bitches. I know there's a way to calculate it. Everyone always tells me, there's a way to calculate it. But do I look like the kind of guy that wants to calculate things? You know how horrible my math is. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'll just always ask for... Uh, just give me whatever you got. Um, let's see. How can we spend the rest of our money? I kind of want to expand mostly these settlements. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken farming is very good because it increases population growth. Just because I want to be able to get my troops where I need them. Roads are also very useful. Eyes around him as old. Building stables. Isigard. People are no longer very happy. They're just kind of... Or very angry. They're just kind of... Eh, content. Nah. Nah. <laughs> could be worse. Could be better. Fuldberg. Perhaps I can get chicken farming there. Why are you laughing? You like chicken. I like no. chicken too. It's my favorite meat. Yeah. Okay. I you like can... to eat them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't like chickens, the creatures. But I was mostly talking about food. No, they're scary. You think chickens are scary? Yeah. They're really scary. They're just too, like, pock, pock, pock. <laughs> How much is Theoden, actually? Yeah, actually, it only brings, like, 200 extra cash. So I think it wouldn't be too bad to send them out. It would be fun to have Theodred in action. Although, actually, Theodred's already a much better commander than his father is. Because he has a much larger unit. Uh, let's keep Theodred for now. Let's save him for the the um, the help of Gondor. And let's pull the Rohirrim there. We'll let either Eoma or Theodred move them. I should probably do some merging, but I don't think I can without deleting entire units. Because I think the max unit size of a Rohirrim Archer unit is 76. Uh, let's check that real quick. Yep, 76. So I'll have to get them all retrained. Now I can get them retrained fairly early on because they only need 25% culture. So as soon as we have 25% culture, we get the stables, we can retrain them. I'd say give or take five turns. No, wait, that would, no, actually give or take 10 turns. 11 turns. Make it 50. Give or take 50 <laughs> turns, which is a very long time. Um, anything else I want to do? You, diplomat. You can actually keep moving towards like Gundabad or something. Go there. You, I guess I can move you to Khand. They're like evil Rohan, basically, because they're also horse people. Mm -hmm. um, you go over. Oh, that's so much cavalry. Do, 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 do. As long as the god. Maybe I should go for the Gollum's Amoria. Ah, so many questions. So few answers. Calm, honey. I can't be calm. There's a war brewing. I can Ooh. feel it in my fingers. <laughs> I can feel it in my toes. Yes, even my toes. You have uh, big toes. I have big toes, that's <laughs> true. Now the viewers know that I have big toes. <laughs> body part by body part, you will dox me. Um, gosh. 
these men, they're not really doing much right now. Maybe I should send Gal. I know I'll send Galma to Pregnus. I'd say. I think. No, actually, let's send him towards Town of the Just so we can get good governor there so the population growth mm -hmm. goes by quicker. Alright, well, uh, I'll see you all back on turn number 43. Oh, they keep offering me the damn Polterners Guild. <sighs> Theodred Glory, perhaps? I won it at some point. So we'll do, we'll do the other the decline trick again. Four Nostas under attack, four Duna down. Oh! oh. That's oh, the, the Glittering Caves! caves. Yes! A diplomat from Ered Luin has come to our halls, Mlord. <laughs> Mlord. He speaks of a trust the dwarves have developed. Is that developed? Isn't that with two? No, I, I have no idea. Something seems off about the word developed there. Is it with two L's? No. Okay. Yeah, whatever. In our people and a desire for us both to grow in wealth and power. Ah, oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> he has requested that we cede the glittering caves to the dwarves, who will act as our vassals should they succeed. He promises that, if successful, the colony will bring wealth, armor, and strong warriors to our cause. But it will cost us 5,000 gold coins. No problem. Oh. And it will certainly see a negative impact on our popularity from the folk of the neighboring regions. They already hate us anyway. Additionally, control of the Holmberg will stay with us, but the dwarves will be powerless to help us outwardly for some, re for some years. He awaits our word, but has warned that, we that should we accept... This folk will not suffer any offense, and we must maintain. Oh my god, I can't speak. <laughs> we must maintain good relations with all the clans of his people, lest we see the colony fail. Do we accept his proposal, milady? Yes. We do. Boom! Five thousand out of the coffers. The dwarf sandwich. Where did you see your, how much money you have? That's down here. Oh, okay. Thanks. We have accepted the offer of the clan lord of Edluin, and we have been informed that a large contingent of civilians are en route from Thorin's Halls, which is over here. Mm. Uh, and we'll be at the new colony soon. So in a couple turns, that's actually pretty pretty early on that we're getting it. In a couple turns, we'll have some dwarves coming over. They'll build some stuff for us. And then we will have the glittering caves. If we go to war with Moria, we can already take Beric relatively early on. I'd like to get the other Casa Doom. <laughs> can you imagine that? It's the mountains. Yeah, Austin Etho is also a very nice settlement to hold. I think this guy's just going to war with the dwarves. He was really lost. I think, like, his dad gave him instructions. <laughs> Take the army, oh. walk down to Austin Ethel, and when you're down there, you want to take a left. And he just <laughs> kept on walking, and then he was like, wait, this isn't right. Why is there horses here? Dwarves don't have horses, so then he just buggered off again. I think that's the only logical explanation, so I'm just going to roll with it. Right? Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the most logical explanation is probably the... The right one. What is it? Is that Occam's razor? I can't quite remember. It's some concept that the most logical explanation should be the right one. Alright, Anna's wife has buggered off again. I think they also got lost. They were just standing there like, is this far bad? Everyone's lost. Everyone's lost. They probably wanted to go to Londiad and they were like, well, just follow the river until you see a city. And they're <laughs> like, well, there's a river, there's a city. But then they were like, hello there. Is this Londiad? We were like, nah, man. This is Tharbad. Currently known as. Theodred's glory. And they were like, oh, that doesn't seem right. As my door randomly shuts itself. Yeah. <laughs> it's a voice command door. You tell it to shut itself and it does. It's very, very nice. Very high tech. <laughs> Alright, what to spend the rest of our money on? Ooh. We do have some extra horses. Yes, I know you're already like, ooh, spending money. I know you're mm. good at that. I want to shop. <laughs> you want to go shopping? Yeah. I don't think there's much shopping to be done. Look, look what these towns... This is what a town looks like. I mean, this isn't exactly... Barcelona or anything like that. Mm. <laughs> I mean, there's a nice boutique right over there, I yeah. guess. I think they sell some, like, traditional dresses or something. What's wrong with some traditional dresses? Nothing. Oh. Did, did I say, like, it was something wrong? No. <laughs> then I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. Did I say something wrong? No. <laughs> and why are you angry? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, let's... I... Are we still building in all these places? Good. Bregnas, good. We'll have roads soon. Beautiful. But where we are going, we don't need roads. Um, stables in Fallbrook, yes. I should have mm -hmm. actually gotten that like 40 turns ago. Alright, everyone's moving. I think we're at the end of our episode. It's a bit of a slower episode. Yeah. Not that much fighting, but we did clean up the rebels of Dunland. We've now successfully taken all the lands of Dunland. Yeah. Hillman's Rest, Dead Glory, Town of the Just, 
and uh, Hammerstroke. They all have custom names. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> we also finally got rid of that Orc Trash at Amon Hen. Nice. We have avenged our fallen general, who I will avoid as much <laughs> as possible to refer to him by name because I have already forgotten. Rohan General number seven. We also know that Bottom and Farmer is still alive, so I think that's some good news. I think we kind of changed faith by killing our general at Amon Hen. Boromir didn't have yeah. to die at Amon Hen, so I think we like did some weird faith yeah. replacement stuff. <laughs> uh, Elf Helm, yeah, from the site of a victorious recreate battle. You have like these two swords on the map. It's the site of a famous battle. I have a couple here as well. Unless, oh, they're gone. They only stay for a little bit. Aww. But when I killed Saruman, which... Oh, so you killed... Ah, oh, yeah, you killed him. Yeah, of course I killed him. Yeah, but you said something like, so sorry. Like, yeah, he, yeah, I know because he, he killed himself. You yeah, and... yeah, yeah. He just ran himself against my lance. It was yeah, an accident, yeah. I swear. <laughs> but yeah, sure that's thing. that for episode seven with our special guest making a return <laughs> in the good campaign. You were looking forward to a good campaign, right? Because you had a little yeah. bit of a hard time, like siding with the evil orcs. Yeah. But here we are. Will you be back some other time? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Very nice. I would nice. love to. Um, and I'll be back. I assume tomorrow, I think, or the day afterwards, depending on how much time I'll have. But soon, either way. Yeah. And with that said, thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. And bye. <laughs>